Here's Robert De Niro and Jessica Lange making big plans in Night in the City. Robert Redford directs the modern classic A River Runs Through It. And Steven Seagal targets terrorist Tommy Lee Jones in Under Siege. everybody while they're alive or after i'll let you in on a secret nobody looks better after oh you're that freak that drives around in sedan at night joe pesci plays a feisty tabloid photographer no, who takes on the mob on. because he falls for a dame in the public eye one of five new movies we'll be reviewing this week on siskel and ebert i'm roger ebert of the chicago sun times and i'm gene siskel of the chicago tribune our first movie is the public eye which takes a fascinating character a 1940s new york paparazzi called the great Berzini and plunks him down into a slow-moving pedestrian crime story in which his pictures help him achieve a manhood and celebrity that his sad sack personality does not. Joe Pesci, one of our more consistently compelling dramatic actors, stars as Leon Bernsey Bernstein, who is the leading Excuse freelance me. crime photographer prowling the streets of Manhattan in 1942. And although cops and thugs consider Bernsey to be a pest they can't get rid of, he views himself as a true he artist of the streets, him. and he'll do anything to get the perfect shot. Christ, Christ, and they all only him out of comfort, they were really solitary. At the end, created a cut. He went to tell me, I'm only him out of comfort, they were his two stairs, 42 to quarry, me, Christy. Ed Quarry, Tristy, Sincero, Tommy, Fiji, me, and me, Christy, and Chuy, Barra, Tari, at the end, created a cut. You went to tell me, I'm only his two stairs. Wait a second. Pesci plays Bernsey as a plodding news hound with an inferiority complex who scurries along the walls of high society hangouts. It is in one of these watering holes, modeled after the stork club, that Bernsey is asked by a wealthy widowed club owner, Barbara Hershey, to find out the identity of a mysterious man who has been hanging around her joint. Couldn't you just, uh... Throw him out? I'd love to. But he says he'll go to my brother-in-law, help him prove Lou's will is invalid. Is it? The great Bernzini was inspired by real-life photographer Arthur Fellig, better known as Ouija, who achieved legitimate artist status and had many museum exhibitions. In this scene, Hershey's character discovers Bernzini's ambition to be taken seriously, and she wants the same for herself. I still know enough to know you're the real thing, or you'd have given up long ago. You see, I never was. Having this place is the closest I'll ever come to it. They're fine together, but Bernsey's involvement in her affairs leads him into a mess of Italian mobsters and a corrupt WASP official who threatens nothing less than our national security during World War II. And this story is really cornball. Would we give two hoots about the story if Bernsey weren't in it? We would not. Is his character fascinating enough to still warrant seeing the film? It's a close call, but I say no. And the reason is that the film doesn't take his artful photography as seriously as he does. We see the photographs, but we don't know why he is drawn to this material. The public eye should have paid more attention to the cameraman and less to the conventions of a Hollywood crime saga. I guess I like this movie a whole lot better than you did, and one of the things you never even touched on is what I think the movie is really about, and that's the subterranean, undeclared love affair between Bernsey and the Barbara Hershey character. He's in love with her, but he never says so. She's in love with him, but can't trust herself to be in love with anybody, and so these two people never really connect until a great line very close to the end of the movie and it seems to me like all of their actions are motivated by this fact that they feel something well, that they can't acknowledge they are unlikely lovers and you're absolutely right i mean she's not supposed to be with this little schlub yeah. and he isn't supposed to be with the grand dame mm -hmm. and i find that appealing i said mm -hmm. they're fine together but the, the movie, the, Roger, how about this story, the mobster story? Isn't that you know, laughable? I have it's seen, laughable. I have seen a thousand film noir movies, and they all oh, basically no. have laughable stories, which are only 
the clothesline upon which to hang all of the other stuff, like the atmosphere, the dialogue, the characters, uh, I, the, I the think, cars, the I think, hats, I think the those films cigars. I think those films have an urgency to them and a kind of energy that this film does not. I think it passes along. And then the photography, it doesn't celebrate a photographer. Well, it, I, there is a love I felt there. it did. I felt that it really showed how much he wanted to take pictures and how well, much that he needed to. Well, okay. Yeah, I liked it a lot. Okay, next movie. And our next movie is Candyman, a thriller about a scholar who sets out to debunk urban legends. You know, those stories like the one about the alligators in the sewers. And she ends up finding that one legend will fight to the death rather than be debunked. That's the Candyman who, according to legend, haunts the empty apartments of Cabrini Green, a Chicago housing project, killing defenseless victims while the 911 operator ignores their calls. The movie stars Virginia Madsen and Kazi Lemons as University of Illinois researchers who venture into the area to check out a Candyman sighting. Madsen takes things into her own hands, climbing through walls to search for clues to the real killer she's convinced is posing as the Candyman. Hey, what y'all doing in there? We're just leaving. You here for the sweep? No. Uh, we're not cops. We're from the university. Well, you don't belong here, lady. That's Vanessa Williams as the mother who knows the Candyman is real. And before long, Madsen thinks so, too, when she meets the legend himself, played by Tony Todd. Believe in me. Be my victim. Now, I have about a 100% feeling that Candyman is being set up to become the next Jason or Freddy Krueger in a series of horror flicks, and it may not be too many years before we're very, very tired of the Candyman. It but didn't this, take that long for me. Okay, this first film is surprisingly effective, maybe because it grounds itself so realistically in a real city where urban legends seem fanciful until the end of the film, of course. Madsen and Lemon seem like smart, capable women, not your average slasher film heroines. And I was very intrigued by the Candyman's argument, which is that since he exists, because people believe in him, if they debunk him, he'll die. In other words, yes, Virginia, there is a Candyman. This is a little deeper than your average horror film, and I enjoyed it a little more. I enjoyed the setup. Mm -hmm. When the Candyman arrives, the guy looks like, frankly, a pimp in, from one of these 1970 black exploitation pictures in a very bad coat with this hook, and then it gets very bloody and wildly bloody, mm -hmm. and it looks like some of the crime photographs, frankly, that Ouija took, but <laughs> yeah. not in black and white. But I mean, blood splattered everywhere. And I thought, gee, if they had reduced the the amount of the Candyman, reduced the attacks, they had a good film working here with fear, set in sometimes daylight in cities, in a real city, obviously yeah. our city. And I thought that the setup was fine, but I thought when the Candyman came, the picture tanked and You know what really I would, routine. my guess on this film, because it was directed by Bernard Rose, who was a very good director, yeah. my guess is the original screenplay was an extremely elegant and smart idea, and somebody came yes, along I think so. who I was think involved right. at the money level who said, give him a bigger hook, let's have more blood, let's have more gore, we have to go for the splatter film audience, we have to go for the kids in the multiplexes, and they added a whole layer of extraneous violence You're right. to what was essentially a, a, a great story to begin study. with. Absolutely yeah. right, and, and so, frankly, disgusting is something I felt an awful lot when I saw The Candyman. Coming up next, a review of the most popular film in America right now, Steven Seagal in Under Siege. I'm thrilled to death to hear that, yeah. What are you doing for dinner tonight? With Campbell's new Italian tomato soup, the everyday doesn't have to taste that way. Now you're cooking. That's cooking. cooking. Make every day bellissimo with Campbell's new Italian tomato soup. That's Steven Seagal, of course, in Under Siege, and to date, approximately six million people have already seen this film, and I'm sure that makes six million satisfied customers, because Under Siege is simply wonderful, an exciting and funny and totally energized action picture with a pair of terrific villains and a very funny hero. Seagal, of course, is the hero, a Navy cook 
who knows more than just how to stir up good grub. He finds himself on a nuclear warhead loaded battleship in the Pacific that is suddenly under attack from an American led terrorist group. Tommy Lee Jones is the bad guy in charge, a disaffected CIA agent. You really think blowing up a bunch of innocent people is going to change anything? Who made you flip like this? I got tired of coming up with last minute desperate solutions to impossible problems created by other people. Jones has either killed or locked up everybody on the ship except ex-Navy SEAL Seagal and a Playboy playmate, Erica Aleniak, who has been brought on board for a party. Tell you what, I'll carry everything. You killed where we run into, all right? I have a little rule about killing people. Well, actually, I have two rules. See, one, I don't date musicians, and two, I do not kill people, okay? Under Siege is a lot of fun. I've been recommending it to men and women alike, stressing it for women, as a matter of fact. There's such a joy to the filmmaking and the performances that it doesn't seem all that violent. Tommy Lee Jones, as always, is a credible villain, and Steven Seagal seems more human than ever before. Obviously, I strongly recommend Under Siege. It's one of the best times you're going to have at a movie this year. It was one of mine. And I completely agree with you. And I, when I saw the trailer for this movie, I thought, here we go, Die Hard goes to sea. I thought I could predict okay. the whole movie. And in a way, I hey. could predict the whole movie, but it was really fun because of the performances. Yeah. And I think you ought to mention the director, Andrew Davis, because yes. this guy is unsung. Yes. And he made Code of Silence, which yeah. is the best Chuck Norris picture. He made Above the Law, Seagal's first film. He made The Package mm -hmm. with Gene Hackman. He is an extremely efficient yes. action director who here takes a situation that looks completely predictable. Yeah. And as you say, he has a lot of fun with it. Well, it is mounted very well. And when, when that movie term means it's big scale, yeah. the shots, what I'm really impressed with is Andrew Davis and his editor. They lay the shots in just when you need them you're saying hey wait a minute what's happening down at the other end of the ship and yeah. bang if he isn't there with that shot and picking up that action uh the the fun of this we have great casting we've been tommy lee jones fans for years well, tommy years. lee jones he, is a terrific villain here the surprise is erica elaniac is the playboy yes. Playmate, because it's a it's the kind of character in an action picture that is completely extraneous. Right. Here you have all these guys shooting each other. You introduce Miss July of 1989, who has nothing to do with anything and knows it, and she just yes. follows him around, and she's going to hide behind him, and then she learns in the course of an hour or two how to be capable and strong, and, she, and it's a terrific and change. Can, there. And you can see that this actress yes. is actually playing a part. They yes. didn't. This isn't a documentary. She's very funny. She knows. It is. She uses this the the kind of value speak a little bit uh -huh. that you might expect uh it's a wonderful film really great fun okay when we come back robert redford's poetic new film about growing up in montana a river runs through it montana there are three things we're never late for church work and fishing My cousin Dolores can pinch the pennies out of a nickel. So when she said, Vinny, I want a good deal on a refrigerator, I wasn't surprised. I tell her, Fred has got a special deal on now, 0% financing for a whole year. She says zero, I say a big zero for a whole year. She races the Fredder, bada boom, bada bing. She gets a great price and 0% financing. And to prove she's not dreaming, she's pinching herself for a change. It's always better to buy at Fredder. You just got to. You just got to. You just got to. Call 1 800 Cable Me now and install cable for just $9.95 and get two premium services for the price of one for the rest of the year. There's so much to see drama, comedy, original shows, plus more in depth election coverage and analysis on CNN than you'll see anywhere else on TV. And two premium services really rocks with top entertainment like other people's money. And the Larry Sanders Show on HBO. Meeting Venus on Cinemax. Paul McCartney Get Back on the Disney Channel. Plus great sports action on Nessie. Call cable if you've already got cable, you can still order two premium services for the price of one for the rest of the year. So call 1-800-CABLE-ME. And install cable for just $9.95. And get two premium services for the price of one for the rest of the year. You just got to. You just got to, yeah.
In Montana, in the early decades of the century, a Presbyterian minister there teaches his two sons that the harmony of man and nature can perhaps best be learned by becoming a perfect fly fisherman. And that's the starting point of A River Runs Through It, Robert Redford's film version of the book by Norma McLean that has become a modern classic. In the film, Craig Sheffer and Brad Pitt play the two McLean boys, the serious Norman and the more adventuresome Paul, who grow up in God's country and sometimes test themselves recklessly. As the boys grow up, they take different paths. Norman falls in love at first sight with a lively young flapper played by Emily Lloyd. Dance. And Paul, a frontier newsman, develops a taste for booze and poker. What say? Well, they said I'd find you at your other office. Yeah, deadline. Can't work there. Hmm. But in the background of every scene is the childhood upbringing of the two boys, whose father, played here by Tom Skerritt, is stern but fair. He imbues them with a deep respect for excellence in all things. I'd say the Lord has blessed us all today. <clears throat> it's just that he's been particularly good to me. A River Runs Through It is one of those great books it's almost <laughs> impossible to film, or so you would think. How do you show how lessons in fly fishing can cast a light over a whole lifetime? I think it's to Robert Redford's credit that this movie does, I believe, capture the essence of Norman McLean's book and leaves us with a feeling for the lives of these two brothers who each in his own way learned his father's lesson. The direction is confident, the screenplay is poetic, the performances are strong, and at the end you are left with the feeling that if every life needs some kind of center, fly fishing just might provide as good a one as any. Oh, uh, now you're, I think you hit it on the, on the head. Um, I think this is a film about family and raising children mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't matter that it's about fly fishing no. this may be heresy to could say be about something else it could have been about something else but but this devotion and devotion and working through consistently and staying with something and mastering something will give we see a real exchange of strength of character mm -hmm. from father to son this is very rare in the movies we don't see a lot of parenting in films if you think mm -hmm. about it we see some behavior some oddball behavior but we don't see some Lasting now that's, parenting. That's a good point because this whole movie is about some a, a parent raise two yes. parents yes. raising their children. That's it. And you're right about the fly fishing because what he, it's a metaphor. It's for being strong and for being capable of doing something all by yourself and doing it exactly right and doing it in nature and doing it in harmony with nature and it's kind of the zen of fly yes, fishing and, in a way. and learning something mm -hmm. I and mean, when we live in a society uh television dominated society people aren't reading kids aren't writing and all this they, maybe they're fly fishing probably not very many of them and to see them do something this is a real yeah, right. heartland experience it's a beautiful film and redford's narration and the decision mm -hmm. to narrate norman claims uh, to words. get his real words in there, yeah. Redford has a great voice. It's heartfelt. Beautiful. Okay, coming up next, Night in the City, the new film starring Robert De Niro and Jessica Lange, and is the remake better than the original? You ambulance-chasing shyster. You don't even trust you. With Minwax polyurethane, you can do more than admire your wood. You can live with it, too, because Minwax contains pure urethane oil to protect wood while giving it beauty you can really live with. Minwax keeps wood beautiful. Walt Disney's The Rescuers Down Under was a video hit with kids everywhere. That was so much fun. I loved it. Now Bernard and Bianca are back in an all-new movie on video. Walt Disney's The Rescuers. When a girl named Penny needs help and time is running out... Do they want us now? It's time to call The Rescuers. Everyone's pitching in. <laughs> on land, on sea, and in the air. <laughs> Gee, rescuers are cool. Your kids will love the rescuers on video cassette. Bring it home today. These are nice looking glasses, but they're always slipping. Can Lens Crafters help? Yes, they're too big. At Lens Crafters, every frame style comes in a range of sizes. So we've got the right size for you. Now my glasses look great and stay put. Lens Crafters, better fit for greater comfort in about an hour. Our next film is Night and the City, a remake of the 1950 drama starring Richard Widmark and Gene Tierney in the story of London street characters trying to make a mark in their lifetimes. 
The new version switches the location to New York and stars Robert De Niro as an ambulance-chasing lawyer who dreams up a plan to establish himself as big time, setting up a semi-pro boxing extravaganza for one night. In the beginning of the film, De Niro talks to a major fight promoter, Alan King, about his plan to turn around his low self-image. You know, why can't I have a piece? Why can't I be the man for once? Also trying to be somebody is Jessica Lange as bartender Cliff Gorman's restless wife. She'd like to open her own bar, and she thinks De Niro, a lawyer with clever connections, can help her. Why on earth would anyone who knows me willingly take me out as a partner? I mean, come on, truly. De Niro's performance isn't all that special. He's really playing here a variant on his Rupert Pupkin character from The King of Comedy, who dreams of big-time stardom, as he tells a sports writer friend played by Barry Primus. 22, maybe 25 grand, all told I could bring back the good old days. Local talent, local arena, bingo banger, what's the rage? Hello, 1938, and it'll catch on like wildfire. What do you think? Night in the City looks good, but it doesn't feel authentic. I often felt it was moving in slow motion. I think the script is overwritten and highly melodramatic, even for the film noir style it wants to imitate. There's really very little that you haven't seen here before. I agree with you, Gene. I was disappointed in this film, and I was disappointed because I felt that if someone could enter into something like the same world as that great 1950 picture, it would be somebody like Robert De Niro yeah, here. Yeah. And you're right to mention Rupert Pupkin because what he's doing is, it's an interesting performance that doesn't belong in this movie because this guy should take himself more seriously, yes. be taken more seriously yes. by the people around him, and be a more serious character. Threatening, and, harder edge, frankly. Yes, that's right, because he's kind of a clown. Yes. And so it's really hard to believe that anybody else really hates him that much because they could look at him and see that he isn't that much of a threat. And then the other problem, as you mentioned, it seems like it kind of meanders yes. along. There doesn't seem to be a real, a real tight energy to pull it from one end to the other. We have an interesting phenomenon. In the last couple of shows that we've done, uh -huh. we have dared to comment on weak performances by Robert De Niro and Dustin Hoffman in Hero. And it's kind of interesting. These are two of our all-time greatest actors. They're borrowing from earlier it's, work. It's not, it doesn't take any daring at all, Gene, because the fact is, unless we can, as moviegoers, unless we can see when they're not good, we can't really see when they are good and why they're good. But it's fascinating yeah. that, that these two giants have stumbled. Okay, coming up next, our video pick of the week, an earlier horror film by the director of Candyman. The things we do to control what we eat. Now you can give in to your craving for snacks the smart way. Introducing Orville Redenbacher Smart Pop. Compared to potato chips, new Smart Pop has 80% less fat and a third fewer calories. So you can eat and eat and eat and not feel the least bit guilty. New Smart Pop. More of a Redenbacher, of course. Of course. We'd like to introduce you to the new Nissan Altima GLE. Altima? Huh, so that's what it's called. It comes with a six-speaker CD system, an available leather trim. It has a powerful 150 horsepower engine and it has more than 40 standard safety features. Wow, would you look at that? The new Altima, the affordable luxury sedan from Nissan. I wonder what they mean by affordable. Presenting kitchens by Home Depot. Home Depot has everything for your new kitchen. We'll create a detailed plan, show you a huge selection of cabinets and deliver right to your home. We can even arrange for express credit, and everything is at the guaranteed low price. Like Delta faucets, dress up any kitchen or bath with Delta's innovative designs. And at Home Depot, we have a tremendous selection of Delta faucets to choose from. Home Depot, where low prices are just the beginning. Domestic violence, a call for help, was part of a continuing effort to break the chain of family abuse. WBZ joined with local organizations and volunteers to help victims of domestic violence, their families, and friends. To receive a pamphlet with more information on where to find help, send a self-addressed stamped envelope to Domestic Violence, WBZ, 1170 Soldiers Field Road, Boston, 02134. Here for you, WBZ TV4. Now it's time for our video pick of the week, and I'd like to recommend a movie that's now on home video named Paper House, a brilliant horror fantasy film by Bernard Rose, the same man who made this week's Candyman. Paper House tells the story of a young girl who is ill and who passes the time in her sick room by drawing pictures of a boy who lives all by himself in a house. What's scary is, in her dreams, the boy and his house become real. 
Can I come in? I can't hear you. I said, go away. Like Candyman, Paper House suggests that our dreams can become real or at least that our minds can create fantasies real enough to endanger yeah. us. It's in video stores on tape and disc, and I recommend that you take a look at it. Now let's take another look at the movies we reviewed this week. We had a split decision on The Public Eye, which stars Joe Pesci as a tough little tabloid cameraman. Gene didn't like the crime story he was in. I especially liked the movie's buried romantic theme. Another split decision on Candyman, a thriller about an urban legend. I liked the premise of the film, but we both felt the extreme violence felt shoveled in. We agree, though, on Under Siege. Two thumbs up for Steven Seagal's thriller with that great villain played by Tommy Lee Jones. Two more thumbs up for A River Runs Through It, Robert Redford's poetic evocation of two brothers being raised in Montana. And finally, two thumbs down for Night in the City and two expressions of disappointment in the performance by Robert De Niro in a confusing screenplay. So A River Runs Through It is a good film this week and Under Siege. Two very different films united, I think, by the joy of what the characters are doing on screen. That, the, the, the thrill of the fly fishing, the thrill of, of saving this nuclear uh, battleship. Okay, that's it for this week. Next week we'll be back with two new movies, including Pure Country, starring country music star George Strait, trying to get back to his Texas roots, and Consenting Adults with Kevin Kline accused of murdering his neighbor's wife. That's next week, and until then, the balcony is closed. St. Ives Swiss Formula Apricot Scrub. St. Ives Swiss Formula polishes your complexion beautifully, naturally. St. Ives Swiss Formula Apricot Scrub. Advanced Formula Centrum with more vitamins and minerals, including beta carotene, than any leading brand. Centrum, more complete from A to Zinc. To give your dog a delicious, meaty taste and variety of flavors, please don't bother the butcher. Try new Butcher's Blend and Butcher's Burger Brand Dog Foods. Spa Shower Gel is an all-in-one cleanser and conditioner so it doesn't strip your skin dry like soap can. Feel the difference of spa and you may never shower with soap again.